In a previous video, I showed you how to open up this remote control car remote. And it, again, it's pretty straightforward. It's a couple of Phillips screws. And I determined that I needed to actually take it all the way apart so that I can figure out how to adapt this best. Now, I knew that I had to take this steering wheel off and I wasn't sure how it was installed. Um, I, it could be press fit but I, I did a quick Google search and I found that in most cases there is a, a screw that holds the wheel in place. Well, this particular one and probably the one you have has a little plastic cap on top of it which hides the screw and you can in theory use a small screwdriver or maybe a small pick to kind of pry it out because it's only, only press fit. But I didn't know if it was press fit or glued, and a lot of these covers are glued. So what I typically do in situations like this is I'll take a little hand drill like this. This is just an inexpensive uh, tool I get on Amazon that includes a couple of bits. And I start with a smaller bit, and I, when this is in place, I drill out the center. And then I put in a slightly larger bit, and widen it up a little bit and by that time I could I have a leverage point to get in with my pick to pop it out now this is obviously a destructive process uh, but I if I want to cover this up I could 3d print a little cover for it maybe with the user's initials or something cool like that but that's just cosmetic it's purely cosmetic once you uh, take that cover off there is a screw which I don't want to lose here and uh, you just take that off and once you've done that the wheel just pops right off so that that's easy to do one thing I want to point out uh, one of my another helpful hint <clears throat> and this comes from my experience as a uh, engine mechanic back in the day is always keep your screws when you're disassembling something organized and I have a lot of cats so I can never leave screws like on my desk because they will end up on the floor well I get parts from Amazon sometimes a lot of the times they'll send it in these little tiny containers which I would normally never have a use for but they are absolutely perfect when you're taking things apart because you could put the little screws that you've removed in there and you could separate it put a label on it separate it by where you found these at so you can put it back together again because you want to put it back together again. Uh, you could use pill bottles, things like that. I, I, I like stuff that has a locking lid so if it gets knocked on the ground it doesn't fall away. I also use these inexpensive dollar store uh, bins. These are made for holding you know, like kitchen utensils but this is good for like just dropping all the stuff in here while I'm working on it so it keeps everything in one place more or less. So I got the the steering wheel off of here and <clears throat> let me take the back off again which we've done previously and uh, so took a look at here and let me move some of these tools out of the way into my bin. Have my little pointer here. So the, the first assembly I wanted to take out was the accelerator brake assembly, this here that controls the speed. And there are, the screws are already out in this video, but there is a, a screw there, a screw there. Um, tucked under here, there is another screw there. This one you don't need to take out because it doesn't go into the actual handle part. So you, what you kind of want to do when you're adapting stuff is take a look at where the screws are going and see, okay, this screw is going into the plastic, so I'm going to have to take it out. So I removed those screws and this uh, pops right out like that. So that's a whole assembly right there and now I could see the potentiometer clearly and the label says B5K so that's telling me that this is a 5 kilo ohm potentiometer. 5K potentiometers are very very common in remote control cars I've, I've found or remote control devices um, versus joysticks where you usually see a 10K. I don't know why that is exactly but there we are. 
and now I've exposed the steering mechanism, which is kind of the reverse of the accelerator. And it is again, another 5K potentiometer and it is held in place. And I've already removed the screws again, but there's a screw there, a screw there, one, two, three, four, four screws there. So, uh, and fortunately the, the fasteners that are used to hold this and the other assembly are all the same size. So if you mix them up, no big deal. Uh, but again, it's a good idea to have them separated and labeled. And so this just pops out like that. So this is the steering assembly. And I, I really love pulling these sorts of things apart because one of the projects I work on, I work on a lot of MIDI controllers and a lot of those, like a pitch bend is, uh, needs to be spring loaded. So I'm always looking for new ways to improve the feel and the auto centering. And so this in effect auto centers and it uses a cam mechanism. So you can't really see it here, but the, the axle here presses up against that other piece of plastic within stretches, expands that spring depending on how you're moving it. And, and it's really, kind of nice and tight and snappy. This would be a good concept for a MIDI controller. Uh, so I may very well use that idea in my next projects. So, yeah, nothing about that. Now, uh, last time I was talking about, I don't know how this board was held, but I did see that there was a big blob of hot glue around this LED. And sure enough, that big blob of hot glue is what held it in place. And my goodness, I even kept the blob of hot glue. Now, here's another tip. You'll you'll see in a lot of stuff that I use, uh, I'll put almost an excessive amount of hot glue. I'll, I'll make the blob bigger than it needs to be, and it looks kind of not neat, but there's a reason why I do that. I do that because if I have to take it apart, it's far easier for me to use a pair of needle nose pliers and I have a nice grab surface to grab off of so that I could grab it and yank it out. And that's exactly what I did with this controller. All I had to do was kind of grab by the excess glue and gently pull it out and it popped right out. It usually pops out as, as one blob. So uh, if you're hot gluing, don't be afraid to have kind of a bigger blob, especially if you want to be able to take things apart. Uh, so once that was done, this board slips out pretty easily. And this gray wire here going up to here, what you have is the, this is the antenna, this is the, because it is a transmitter, it's a radio transmitter, so it needs an antenna. So this is the little antenna and it's just pressed in place. So this entire assembly comes right out like that. And now I'm gonna take a look at the power, which I haven't played with yet. So if I break something, you'll see it live. These, yeah, these are typical just press, kind of slid down, pressed in place. So use your needle nose pliers and gently pull them up. If something gives you resistance, stop. But otherwise, it's usually good to go. And again, you'll want to keep track of where your positive and negative was. Fortunately, I'm recording this video, so I can go back to the video and know where things went. So that takes basically everything out of the enclosure and we're left with the core pieces. So if I didn't want to go back to the original enclosure, I didn't need to, I could certainly put this controller board in its own enclosure and then have a connection to uh, make the switch and joystick adapted single joystick because that, and I haven't mentioned it before, but the, the primary goal here is to have the uh, steering and the acceleration uh, on a single joystick so that the user can operate it like they operate their power chair stick so that for you know pressing it forward will do the accelerator and nothing else if you go t toward the right it will start turning that sort of thing so a single joystick setup and you when you think about it, this is really how joysticks are. They're two potentiometers set at 90 degree angles to each other. One does the x-axis, one is the y. 
So uh, th this came out nice and cleanly. I'll be able to work on it without working with all the plastic as I determine if, um, if I want to keep this, if I want to put it back. I kind of want to put it back in there uh, so it's still usable. But I may not, depending on how things go. So uh, that's the whole tear down here. It's all apart. Uh, these plugs and whatnot, like the power one has a little bit of hot glue there to hold it from falling off. So if I needed to take that out, I just pull it with my nail nose and off we go. Same thing. There's no glue on these two, um, but just gently kind of rock the connectors to, to pull the wires out if you need to. These are pretty standard uh, connectors. And then you have a little antenna. And the little antenna actually has a connection there, so the antenna could be upgraded, which is nice. A lot of the times on the inexpensive cars, you'll just see a piece of wire soldered onto the board. Um, now, the length of the wire, since this is a radio, is important because the length of the wire is a, um, a divisor multiplier of the frequency. So if it's whatever, two gigahertz or whatnot, you, the ideal is a multiplier of that. So it's like, you'll hear terms like quarter wave, half wave, eighth wave, full wave, that sort of thing. Um, so if you were gonna replace this antenna, you want to have something of a similar length. Get, uh, doing longer is not necessarily going to do you any good. Not at, not at a gigahertz frequency. Those are very, High frequencies, which means very small peak-to-peaks uh, -peak on the transmissions. So that's that. There's your radio background for the morning. Um, so we'll see what happens next.